In today's video, we're gonna talk about seven GA4 mistakes that almost everybody makes. We're gonna start off in the admin panel where I'm gonna show you a common mistake that I see very often. As you already know, everything in GA4 is an event and we tend to define those events more precisely by giving them certain parameters that GA4 calls custom definitions. But in order to make custom definitions accessible in GA4 reports, we need to register them, either as a dimension, which we use mostly for the descriptive values, and custom metrics that we use for numeric values that define our events better. The second GA4 mistake that I come across very often is that business owners who operate outside of European economic area or outside of California, Virginia or Colorado or any other jurisdiction that has passed and has been enforcing uh, some kind of a privacy act, they tend to believe that it does not apply to them because obviously they are not from that jurisdiction. But it's not true. Very simply put, if your website visitors come from California or they come from European economic area, GDPR or CCPA or any other act applies to your business and you may get fined as it's very thoroughly described in the document that I hold here in my hands, privacy-led marketing that has been published by Data Driven You and is accessible and downloadable in the URL that you see on your screen right now. GDPR or CCPA or any other privacy act applies to your business if your website visitors come from these areas. The next GA4 mistake that happens very often is that account administrators turn on the filter for internal traffic here, but they don't actually tell to GA4 what internal traffic is, meaning that they do not mark some IPs as internal. And the way you do it is to go to your data stream, then you need to configure tag settings, open tag settings. Once they're open, you scroll down, show more, and here you will find define internal traffic. Uh, once you click here, you can actually define specific IPs that GA4 should treat as internal. And we have a separate video for this on our YouTube channel. Another common GA4 mistake is that businesses do not turn on their Google Signals in the admin panel. And Google Signals are a prerequisite for your audiences to be able to flow into your Google Ads account. So no matter how many audiences you create in your GA4, they will not be visible back in Google Ads and they won't be eligible for remarketing unless you turn on Google Signals. Which leads me to our next mistake. People do turn on Google Signals without actually going through privacy policies. And that's also one thing that Privacy-Led Marketing Handbook focuses heavily. And as I said, you can download this Privacy-Led Marketing Handbook for free on the URL that you see on your screen. Next, I wanna bring to your attention duplicated events. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the example because we do not have duplicated events in this account, but it happens very often with GA4 accounts that are fed through an automated solution and through GTM on top of that. Speaking of GTM, Data Driven You offers the best, most comprehensive and most up-to-date GTM course, and you can take a sneak peek at the URL that you see on your screen right now. Even though the course deals with some basic features of GTM, I'd say that it's actually what's missing in many GTM integrations out there, even the most professional ones, because people are mostly self-taught and they lack a good foundation for building up. Of course, there is a separate module that deals with privacy issues, and I strongly recommend that you at least take a look at this course and what does it offer. The next GA4 mistake that impacts all the accounts because it's a default GA4 value is the data retention that is by default set to two months, meaning that after two months of inactivity by any user, 
their data gets erased from the account. And we strongly advise anybody who opens GA4 account to change this into 14 months because they will preserve the user data for a longer period of time. It does not mean that your reports will expire after two months, only that user data lasts for this specified time span. Have we already gone through seven GA4 mistakes? Because there are more. For example, people tend to treat their subdomain traffic as referral, just like Universal Analytics did, and in GA4 that's not the case. And we actually address this problem in a separate video on our YouTube channel. Then uh, sometimes we see events in GA4 being marked as conversions when they really should not be. So they pollute your percentages, they actually skew your absolute numbers, and they make your reports harder to read and you got to jump through more hoops to make them actually useful. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you soon in the next video.